Well, well, hello. It's How good to see you. It's nice to see you. Always one of my favorites. I know, I know. I got kind of. I know. I heard it was a good night. It was a good night, yeah. So, uh, give us a recap for the Hollywood Fight Night. A, a terrific ending to a terrific night. Where do you uh, envision Hollywood Fight Night going in, say, the next year? Well, it's a fun uh, series here in LA. It's actually become most popular series in LA. The fans love it. Michael Buffer was out at the last at the last show. He just came down the the red carpet. When you got guys like Sorry Boa Chuck fighting Adrian Corona, uh, George Navarro had an impressive knockout. You know Philly Rubalcaba. I mean those type of guys. Those are young up and coming guys. Boa Chuck now is 14 0 with 14 knockouts. So we're excited uh, about developing the future uh, champions there. Um, Serhei. He's trained in Big Bear with Triple G. He's uh, seen how, how he trains, trains with Abel Sanchez, Triple G now. The big news is he has a new trainer. Triple G naturally is fighting June 8th at Madison Square Garden. So we're excited about having him back in the ring. Fans are looking forward to, to uh, Triple G fighting, and he's fighting undefeated Steve Rolls from, from Canada. So with the new trainer, uh, with fighting the undefeated, hungry Steve Rolls, it'll be interesting to see. And he also has some time off. It'll be interesting to see how he looks back in the ring. As he begins his work with Jonathan Banks, you know, they're very new into the relationship. He's an experienced fighter, uh, former champion. At this point in his career, is there a growing pains period when you switch to a trainer at this point in your career? Well, I'll tell you, Jonathan filled almost impossible shoes when he took over uh, with the unfortunate passing of Emmanuel Stewart when he started training Vladimir Klitschko. So Jonathan is used to the biggest fights, the big stage, the sold out soccer stadiums in Europe with all the Klitschko fights, or at least with Vladimir's fights. So, Triple G actually, before even training with Jonathan, before working out with him, before hitting the mitts, just sitting down with him for about a half an hour, his brother Max was there, I was there, and he said, uh, this is the guy I want to work with. He just uh, talked to him, interacted naturally, he knew, and he had seen Jonathan working Vladimir's fights. He had, he had met Jonathan when Cecilia Brekus was on Triple G's show at Cinco de Mayo, if you remember that. So. JB was in the corner with uh, Cecilia, and uh, he was familiar with him, and, and so far the transition's going uh, very well. I mean, Abel Sanchez played a very important role in Triple G's career. Now the pressure's on Jonathan to see if he can make him even better than Triple G was before, and that's what the fans are looking forward to. It's the intrigue of a Triple G not all, only being off for a little while, but seeing how he does with, uh, with his new trainer. Triple G is a lot more serious these days than we remember. You know, a little bit more withdrawn, a little more quiet, a little more um, careful uh, of the way he speaks. Is it all part of the transition, or is it just kind of um, in retrospect over this first portion of his career and thought, maybe I just need to tighten up the reins a little bit? Well, the scores in the last fight against Canelo really affected him in terms of he felt he won the fight, we felt he won the fight, the majority of the fans and the ringside media felt he won the fight, so he didn't think he lost the fight with his performance in the ring, but he was very disappointed that uh, two judges were able to take his belt away. Uh, in fact, two, the two judges that voted for Canelo in the 12th round, which the majority of people thought Triple G won, but he's not dwelling on that now, but that's a big reason why he took uh, some time out of the ring. Naturally now with the new trainer, it's a transition for him, so I, I think there's a lot of intrigue. We're going to announce the undercard fights here, uh, I think, uh, at the end of this week for uh, the June 8th Madison Square Garden show. And um, I think the fans will be in for a great fight night, uh, the return of Triple G to MSG. We've been doing a little informal poll here. We talked to Sugar Ray and we talked to Michael Buffer, and they seem to think that the Triple G Canelo 3 could be looming out there in the, in, within the next 18 months. Well, that's what they feel. Is that is that true? Do you want to uh, tell us now? Yeah. We won't tell anyone else. We, we hope it's looming out there because Canelo did his part. He beat Denny Jacobs. Triple G now has to do his part to beat Steve Rolls. If uh, Triple G is successful against Steve Rolls, then that opens the door for the third fight. You know, we'll have to sit down with the zone, we'll have to sit down with Oscar and see if we can make the third fight after that. That's the fight that the fans want, that's the fight that the media wants. And uh, it's the two best middleweights in the world fighting each other for a third time. We see the heavyweights 
have a problem making one fight, this would be the third time, if we can make it, it'd be the third time that these guys fight each other. Not only two best middleweights, two two most marketable middleweights, and the two most two of the most marketable fighters in the sport of boxing. And the second fight, remember, John, the second fight was better than the first fight. So if they get in the ring a third time, I think it'll be even more exciting. But we can't look forward to that. Triple G can't look ahead. Fast Steve rolls, and if he does, if he doesn't win, then you know all that talk is uh, kind of out the window. Behind Canelo and Triple G, who are the next three, four, and five best middleweights in the division? Yeah, you know, that middleweight division is so deep right now. You got—I mean—you got to put Danny Jacobs up there. The only two fighters I think they can beat Danny Jacobs are Triple G and Canelo. But you got Danny Jacobs, Andrade is there, Charlo is out there. So I think you got that depth of the middleweight division. You never know. Jared Hurd might move up to middleweight. Um, so I think there is going to be a lot of great middleweight fights, especially if a third fight happens with Triple G and Canelo. They're they're uh, so evenly matched that I think that uh, I wouldn't be surprised that uh, a fourth fight happens. I've always admired your ability to work with everybody, with from from Bob Arum to Al Heyman to everyone. Is there a way to possibly make a Triple G Charlo fight in the future? Is that a, a talk that you and Triple G have ever had with each other? I think so. Uh, I mean, I was forced with, with Triple G. We had so few opponents wanting to fight him. I had to work with every promoter. <laughs> there are probably literally 10 different promoters uh, that I've worked with over the years uh, with different opponents for Triple G. So. Uh, I think a Charlo fight is a great matchup for Triple G. Uh, Charlo's uh, coming up. He's he's great on social media. He he's, he he definitely uh, is a great self promoter. And um, you know, if Triple G is successful against Steve Rolls, naturally the priority would be to get the third fight with Canelo. But a fight with uh, Charlo is is a great fight. And um, if there's a way to make it, I'm sure we'll 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 figure out a way to make it. And lastly, for me, if there was one fighter out there right now that you could take under your wing, who would you take? If he's just like, I'm open and available for anyone, who would uh, who would you get? Well, I tell you, I'm, gonna wrap this up so I'm, get this I'm, getting, I'm getting pulled off the stage. Uh, I really like Inouye a lot because uh, Inouye, he was on Superfly 1 that we promoted. And, uh, you know, you got with that knockout over that undefeated uh, champion, uh, you got to give him credit. I think he's really uh, towards the top. Usyk, naturally, uh, you know, I, I, uh, he's with K2 Ukraine, who I helped put him on uh, two of the HBO shows, and naturally, I helped uh, the Klitschko start K2, so naturally we have the association with K2 Ukraine, so those are the two guys that are, uh, I, I think, uh, towards the top right now. All right, thanks, Tom.